there are so many databases out there. Which one should you know about? And in high-level system designs, how can you identify that for these use cases, this database would be a great fit? So yes, this video is like a cheat sheet for databases in high-level system design. And without wasting any time, let's get started. Time series databases. As the name suggests, these databases are usually used whenever your data is associated with timestamps. For example, your stock prices, or for monitoring, or for IoT or real-time data analytics. Basically, whenever your data has to be ordered by time or stored at regular intervals, you can consider using time series databases. Now, as you must have understood from all of these scenarios, we will obviously need a lot of high write throughput in all of these cases. So yes, the commonly used time series databases like InfluxDB, OpenTSDB, Prometheus, all of them have very high write throughput and they offer high availability by clustering. You can also tune in your consistency. Before we go ahead, I would like to take a moment and remind you that the second batch of live HLD course is starting on 16 January. Please don't miss the live classes if you're interested because it is amazing. You can see the testimonials from the first batch of students. They enjoy it so much. These databases that we're discussing in this video, we will not be just covering them in detail, but I will also show you demos for real use cases. We'll also discuss other topics like networking in detail. There are no prerequisites for the course. Everything is mentioned on the site. Do check it out at least once. The link is in the description. Testimonials, detailed FAQ, everything is mentioned over there. Do consider joining if you're interested in HLD. And now let's continue. Many people do not know about graph-based databases, but they can be extremely useful whenever the relationships between your entities is very important. You can actually imagine your data modeled into a proper graph with entities being represented by nodes and the relationships between the entities represented by edges of the graph. As you must have guessed, these graphs specialize in handling different complex queries on relationships between the graphs. For example, handling different kinds of traversals. One very good use case of graph-based databases would be social network because there's a lot of relationships between the users, their followers, and interests. Another good example would be handling the dependencies and the connectivity in network infrastructure. Neo4j and Amazon Neptune are very common graph-based databases that you should know about. Neo4j is open source and Amazon Neptune is fully managed DB service by AWS. Interestingly, both of them follow as a properties. Cassandra is used by a lot of big companies like Netflix, Apple, Uber. But the first thing that comes to my mind whenever I think about Cassandra is its high write throughput and high availability because of clustering. In fact, it offers such great, awesome write throughput that a lot of people often end up using it as an alternative to time series database, basically to store data for real time analytics, monitoring, IoT, etc. You can also tune your consistency and it does give high read throughput also, but you should model your data such that you focus your reads on the primary keys. Also, its query language is called SQL, Cassandra query language, which ends up looking a lot like SQL and your data also looks like it is in tables, but here you're dealing with column family structures. I am sure a lot of you must have already heard or used MongoDB. It is document-oriented NoSQL DB. Basically, each piece of data is stored in key value pair called a field. And these fields together form a document. Basically, your document is a JSON-like structure. To be precise, it's called BSON or binary JSON. And a group of documents is called a collection. So collection inside that documents, inside the document, many fields, which is basically key value pairs. The best part about MongoDB is its dynamic schema. Basically, you do not need a predefined schema. You can be adding or removing fields from a particular document without affecting the other documents in the same collection. So whenever you need dynamic schema, you can directly think of MongoDB. A very good example would be uh, catalogs and product inventories. You might not be sure exactly what all data you need to store, exactly what all fields you will need. So you can just use MongoDB. It also supports nested documents. So you could also use it for a common complex and nested structures. It also offers good query performance because it supports second indexes. So querying is also efficient over here. DynamoDB is primarily a key value store. But the main thing that you should know about DynamoDB is that it is fully managed by AWS. 
So even if you have varying workloads, you can rely on it for a seamless and consistent performance. Basically for use cases like gaming, web apps, mobile apps, when you're not sure about how much workload you're going to get, is it going to be more or less, you can rely on DynamoDB because AWS is going to manage it for you. It also supports flexible schema, but here you need to determine the primary key structure in advance. I am sure you must have heard of relational databases. All the databases that we have discussed so far were NoSQL databases. The commonly used SQL databases are MySQL, MariaDB, PostgreSQL. Now, all of these are relational databases and the two main things that you need to keep in mind for relational databases are firstly, predefined schema. Secondly, asset compliance. What is predefined schema? In relational databases, your data is stored in tables, in rows and columns. So you need to know beforehand how are you going to organize your data into rows and columns. There is a fixed structure in relational databases. Second thing is asset compliance, which is just awesome for use cases like transactional data in financial cases. But horizontal scaling can be tricky when it comes to asset compliance. So whenever you are using relational databases, know that horizontal scaling can be challenging. It can be done by manual sharding, but yes, it can be challenging. Hadoop is another NoSQL DP. It is usually used to deal with big data. It is known for its seamless integration with the Hadoop ecosystem, of course. So whenever you're using HDFS or MapReduce or Spark, you can consider using HBase. Apart from these databases, you should also know a bit about blob storages, basically to store binary large objects like images, videos, or documents. The common blob storages that I am sure you must have heard of are Amazon S3, Simple Storage Service, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud Storage. I hope this video gave you a good idea about databases used in high-level system design and I hope you can think about in which all cases you can use which all databases. Obviously, in real scenarios, you will consider a few more factors like cost, data security and compliance and even things like community and support for the databases or the feature requirements for the system and also integration available for the databases for different programming languages and tools. But I hope this gives you a good start and let me know in the comments did you like the video or not or if there is anything I missed or anything else that you would like me to add. Give me ideas for more videos and I would love to create as much helpful content as possible. I hope you enjoy the video. Please do subscribe. Please do check out EduCourses and the Literate Store and see you next time. Bye-bye.